Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S episode number 3. Alright, the previous episode we got a new family member. Uh, Iru joined uh, our team, our house. You know, like she, she's going to start living with Kobayashi, uh, Kanna and Toru. So yeah, and uh, now she needs to figure out what she wants to do. Just like how Toru does the housework, how Kanna goes to school and how Kobayashi goes to her job she also needs to you know figure out what she wants to do and uh, yeah now my best bet is she'll probably like you know take some kind of part time because i don't see this going any other way because like you know like i doubt she wants to go to school she kind of said that she wants but she's quite old enough not to go to school i'm not sure about that maybe she can go to some middle school or high school i'm not sure but i doubt she's going to school because like you know kana already goes to school that it will be kind of uh what can i say like she she should probably do something new she wants to try something new i think and toru is obviously like taking care of the house and kobashi goes to her office so she she'll be alone at home so i i probably think she's probably going to take like you know take some kind of part time maybe some kind of um, cafe being a waitress or uh, what else like is any other job I'm not sure it's some convenience store you know clerk or something who knows let's see let's see what she actually uh, thinks about doing also another thing happened we got a little glimpse in the whole um, I think chaos faction and the harmony faction they said you know how the guy tried to kill Ilulu but obviously like over she saved her and <laughs> Toru came and <laughs> taught him a lesson so yeah, that's another thing we got to know in the previous episode. So yeah, let's get started. This is uh, episode number three of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. S. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it whichever is a preference, and let's get started. Okay, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one. Go. Oh, this is what was her name? Saikawa. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> mother <laughs> oh boy Saikawa keep yourself in check and here she goes <laughs> oh boy <laughs> the way Kanna talks. Oh boy. Oh no, I I is Ilulu here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Why do people not lock their door? I don't get <laughs> Always in anime. No doors are locked. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, turns out that's the case. Okay. All right. Wow, this this opening is really great. I think I like this opening even more than the season 1 opening. All right. Now I'm guessing we're probably going to get some slice of lifey parts in these like you know in the couple of episodes that's going to come and then we're probably going to get into some more st serious stuff <laughs> all right <laughs> while back oh boy oh <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you're realizing it now? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright. What? Oh. What? She she doesn't oh. Okay. What? She wants to watch TV or something? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Huh. Well. <laughs> oh boy. Penalty. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Well, she's a dragon, I guess. Like, she'll act like that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Quest of Water is here. Okay, there are four people now. <laughs> Damn, the perspective. What the hell? What the hell is this? <laughs> oh, she, she, she sensed her, I'm guessing. Ah. Right. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Oh mm. no! They then they don't won't meet. They won't meet. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. What? He feels guilty. Hmm. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> what oh my god she can do anything and uh, <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> well, the scale is a little bit different, but still, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> mm. Yeah, true. Yeah, to her. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the face.
<laughs> okay. Well, oh, that's nice. There you go. All right. Yeah. Oh, Elma is also here. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Extracurricular activities. Okay. <laughs> Oh, why? <laughs> oh, what? Oh, wait. Need some change or something? Oh. Oh, sh <laughs> oh my god onlooker wow everyone's here what the hell <laughs> okay so who will all right oh everyone's here wow <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's here, I guess, so... <laughs> oh, Kobash is also here. I thought she was probably out. Alright. <laughs> Okay. Draw. Oh my god, I'm looking forward to what Fafni draws. <laughs> oh boy. What? What? Did... Okay. <laughs> King. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Okay. What the? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. What? Then who? <laughs> oh. Yeah. But she's from the <laughs> All right, let's let's see what she Okay. No dice crew. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, it's going to philosophical. Or maybe not. Hmm. Damn. Made up with Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, she's still a maid. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. Everything is a made output. <laughs> oh. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, she. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. But won't it be a bit big for her? Or maybe not. Oh, yeah, she looks good. There you go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Okay. Now, whatever you... Hmm. Oh. All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, all right, that's nice. Like, you know, she. <laughs> right. <clears throat> oh, they're still playing? Or. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. So many of them. <laughs> All right. Oh god. Oh. Um, yeah. Tweets. What? Travel. Wait, is she going to become an idol or something? <laughs> oh! Okay. Um... <laughs> wow. Oh, she's going to play. What the hell? <laughs> She's like, oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your talent hurts. Wow. 
What, what is this? Yeah, it's like a hobby. Oh, damn. Whoa. You can, she can do anything. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, he was she was not having fun playing it. That's the main thing here, I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah, very true. Yeah, let's <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's not so serious. Oh boy. So what now? Oh! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, I was literally saying that. No, not idol worship, but idol, you know? Oh my god, it's the first season opening. <laughs> what the hell? What? No, she, she doesn't have enough time. She's already... Oh boy. <laughs> oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> what? Was she drunk or something? <laughs> Is she drunk or something? <laughs> okay. Oh, this is okay. The the plane. Oh boy. Okay. Wait. Oh, she won. What? <laughs> oh, that's the end. Wait, is this the preview for the next episode or something? I think so. Wait, did it did it change the ending? I oh, know these are the things that we saw before. Okay. Yeah, these are uh, I'm from season one, as far as I can remember. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, is this song sung by Toru? Yeah, oh my god. I was thinking, what is this ending song? It's a sing song that she was singing before. <laughs> oh boy.
<laughs> All right, that's the end. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, did they really put that song in the ending? Okay. Ah, uh, well. Anyways. All right, so very like you know simple episode. Uh there's only one thing that like you know really happened uh, which uh like, you know which uh, push forward the character development is of Ilulu. The whole thing where she was uh, hesitating about what to do because he's feeling guilty but she still wants to have fun with the others that that whole situation where where the quattro comes in and you know gives her some advice little advice and uh, yeah all that you know that was like the <clears throat> thing that uh, uh, Ilulu needed at that moment and uh she's still kind of <laughs> lazing around at home i'm sure she'll like you know find something by the end of it uh by the end of the you know season something that she wants to do herself and so yeah anyways okay so yeah this episode here uh we meet saikawa i think it's, it's the first time in this season or yeah i think so it's the first time in this season and uh, <laughs> oh boy and uh Ilulu and Saikawa have a little conversation where Ilulu gets to understand how crazy Saikawa herself is. <laughs> oh my god. And uh, yeah, they they become fun, they, like, you know, they become fast friends. Also <clears throat> All right. Um well, just a sec. Okay, so the the thing here that Quetzal Quatro was talking about uh, the whole thing about being unable to you know, experience stuff as kids now like this is what you know like we've seen this in a lot of animes especially which has a setting like this where there's a person who is has been like you know doing these kind of um, like who has been uh, what do you call it forced to grow up because of their circumstances just like Ilulu here and uh, like you know like from a very young age they weren't able to experience their childhood and there's a lot of animes which has a similar setting like this As ilulu is also kind of similar to that uh, she was like again she was forced to grow up she was in the midst of her you know childhood she was having like as we saw in from the um, flashback she was having fun with the kids she was playing with them she had a little doll and you know like humans that she actually cared about but like you know that that was her childhood phase that was the phase where children actually develop and grow their personality and become a person who like you know who they'll be reflecting in the future which which will which it will reflect on in the future and like it's like the basic foundation is made at that age now if you are you know if you are brought up in a certain circumstance you know, uh, a child will grow up being like that and in the future they will have a personality kind of like that, leaning towards that. And later on that personality might change because of, you know, real world experiences because I doubt pers like, you know, people stay the same personality throughout their life. They change, you know, each and every day they change. Uh, for example, like if uh, today I, I thought about something in a certain way. Uh, and something happens which changes my mind completely and makes me realize something completely new and different tomorrow i'll be like you know born a completely uh, not born sorry wake up a completely uh, new person and i will I would have changed my you know perspective on some uh, certain things that i have thought about all this while because of something happening that completely changed my perspective so that's what it is like people change each and every day but the basic foundation is made in the ch in the person's childhood, which unfortunately uh, people who are unable to have or unable to get people who are forced to grow up too quickly always are very you know uh, what do you call it uh, what can I say like, are always very extreme or inflexible I can call like you know I think you can you can say it like that v become very inflexible. Because, like, you know, like, people who are forced to grow up, Ilulu, for example, here, she, she became a person who has, you know, who started hating, despising humans. 
uh, but at the same time she wanted to nothing to do with that so unless and until she found kobayashi she was like that and she became very inflexible she was like as, as soon as he came to this world she was like i'm going to destroy all the people here so <clears throat> that's basically it like uh what happened and after she found kobayashi she was able to go back as uh, lukua said she was able to suddenly go back to her childhood which uh like you know like uh which made her realize that yeah i can be deceived by this person and uh, that like you know that's basically like uh whoever it is parents grown-ups who count like you know interact with a child uh they really do trick their children or like you know young ones why because they want them to have a what can i say like you know a hassle-free a uh, good childhood without burdening you with stuff like, you know like that's basically what it is like as kobayashi said like let me deceive you like that's the main thing what a child you know gets from what can i say their parents you know like their parents deceive them so that they don't have to think about certain real like you know like uh, like certain things like uh for example like you know what can i say like people like things that you need to think about as you start to grow up those things so that a child does not get you know uh re- like you know uh what can i say does not get bombarded with those type of situ- uh, situations or things parents or like you know adults deceive the children so that they can live their life hassle free without any you know thinking about anything and have a good childhood but yeah she did not have that person in her life all this while she was forced to grow up she was forced to think about those things that you are not supposed to think at that age and now that she has found kobayashi again and kobayashi says that yeah let me deceive you she was able to go back to her childhood anyways um like that was basically it it was a really great portion where Luka kind of explains what like you know like what is the actual problem with uh, Ilulu and why like you know like <clears throat> why is she hesitating why is she like this it's, it, the, the main problem is because she was forced to grow up that's basically it and now she has found someone that she can uh, you know depend on which is Kobayashi so yeah like that, that was a really great portion I have to say and all right and then like the whole thing you know uh, uh, they have like fun they start playing cards and all that stuff and then we come to the next portion where kobayashi you know talks about her maid outfit that she once wanted to like you know want, once wore and it did not look good at her and she became this kind of uh, <laughs> like you know person who fusses too much about maid outfits and became uh, otaku as you can call them you know maid otaku as they said as she said <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> now everyone like you know everyone shows uh not shows but everyone mm, what do you call it gives their idea of what a maid outfit should be you know? and they kind of get a picture and all that stuff happens now <clears throat> when Toru, uh, uh, when yeah when toru says that i want you to wear my outfit uh, at first kobashi was like uh, like you know like at the beginning it seemed as if kobashi was going to reject her but then she said that okay like i'll wear it now <clears throat> the thing that georgie said is very interesting in a way as she said that it's not that the cloth the dress that you wear makes you that person it's actually the reverse a maid wearing something made makes it a maid outfit because you are a maid the outfit that you wear makes it a maid outfit so it's not actually the reverse it's actually the other way around which obviously kobayashi like as she says in the end like you know she she had a completely reverse opinion on that like, you know she wanted to cosplay she did not want to want to become a maid she just wanted to cosplay like for her it was like it was a maid outfit that's why i want to wear it it's not that like you know i am a maid so i wanted to wear an outfit which is which becomes a maid outfit it was completely opposite for her so like you know that made that made her realize that the thing that she did after that after she did not like how it looked 
uh, on her she became as she said like you know she became too fussy about made outfits always like you know <laughs> first about them and became a maid otaku became too particular about maid outfits and all and i think she said something like uh to toru like i just a sec let me check that portion now <clears throat> um all right here it is uh she says that that also means that no matter what outfit they were it's not a maid outfit it's just cosplay there you go um i was always rejecting your outfit but after wearing it i had a change in my heart embarrassed though it was it wasn't bad i thought oh so this is what i wanted to wear isn't it i thought cute fruits, uh, uh, outfits wouldn't look good on me so i always wore men's clothing i was worried about whether or not i would look good at it but i've always wanted to wear a maid outfit then i shouldn't have just worn it without caring Mm, then I remember something. Yeah, I wanted to cosplay. Okay, that. Just a sec. Just a sec. All right. But you know, uh, seeing you and having you serve as a maid made me realize that the pouch outfit you wear is a proper maid outfit. Yeah, that's basically what she like. You know, realizes that. It's just that the way she thought about it was completely different that the way Georgie explained it to her that it's not the dress that makes a person but it's the person that makes the dress like, you know that's what like, you know changed her perspective after she like you know realized that what Toru was doing is it's not that the outfit she's wearing you know like makes her a maid it's because she is kind of like you know taking care of Kobayashi the, the outfit that she wears is a maid outfit however it looks like she could even wear uh as georgie said she could even wear a school outfit and you know because she's a maid it can be called as a maid outfit it's not the dress that matters it's, it's the person that matters what she is and what she does for you i think it was something like that that she, georgie actually tried to make her realize and that's very true you know like if you wanted to cosplay obviously like no one is uh, like you know stopping you from doing it you can do it uh, if you like that if that's your passion but like you know like thinking about it only through a cosplay perspective as Kobashi always did you know uh, as she said that I did not like the outfit at the beginning but after Georgie explained it to me and after I wore it I realized it's not so bad you know that's like you know if, if you don't look at it from a cosplay perspective uh, like this is another way of looking at it and this is what actually you know really suits Toru and that's what makes it good like yeah that's something i think like you know georgie made her really realize and uh, i'm sure like you know she sh like as she said that i i really i don't like your outfit but then after wearing it i i realized that no that's not actually it it's the outfit you wear uh, because you wear it it is a proper made outfit and uh, yeah that's like that was great and uh, like you know it was georgie who explained it she she's a maid even though she says i'm a student but still like you know she's she's a proper mate so it even makes more sense because she she'll definitely have more uh you know insight on all of these things because she's been doing this like you know maid job for quite a while and uh, yeah like that was nice <sighs> all right and then in the next portion we get a little bit of the hobby thing like you know what uh <laughs> kobashi wants to do kobashi can do almost uh, uh not kobashi sorry Toru, what Toru wants to do. Toru can do almost anything, but she, like, you know, she is really not passionate about uh, any of the things that she did, like, you know, singing and uh, what else? You know, uh, the, the carving thing that she did, all that stuff. And, like, you know, she was not at all passionate about it. She was like, yeah, that's easy. But, like, we actually realize in the end that when she does all of that thing, for Kobayashi, she becomes so passionate. So, like, you know, like, in the end, what she was doing, she was basically singing songs about Kobayashi. She was making, uh, like, you know, figurines about Kobayashi. All of those things that she barely had any interest before. You know, all of those things, she was starting, she started doing it. But just because Kobayashi was in it, she was so happy. Like, so, I guess that's her hobby, Kobayashi. <laughs> you know, making things for Kobayashi, doing something for Kobayashi. That's basically her hobby, that means. 
like you know like whatever like th- th- i think that the, the guy uh what was, na- what was his name the guy who carved uh the thing he said something like that like think that you are yeah he said that like you basically like you know uh doing something very uh like you can play instruments very well but it, it was just that you were doing it uh what, what did he say just a second i happened to hear that but it felt like you were just playing the score without precise timing with precise timing <laughs> it's probably because it was too easy for you so there's no wasn't any room to pour emotions into it here it is this, this is a very great line without curiosity and emotion you won't be satisfied by that hobby that's basically it that's what she was doing but as soon as that curiosity and emotions comes into play which is kobayashi here you know the everything that she did before playing the songs carving wood all of that thing like you know uh like it, it became enjoyable for her that's what you know i'm i'm sure she realized that by the end of it that her hobby is basically doing stuff for kobayashi <laughs> oh my god yeah that was a really great you know thing in the end and yeah a lot of like you know like uh, things we saw very slice of lifey all of, all of these things that we saw in this episode but at the same time they taught us a few quite a lot of things you know and in the, the beginning the whole thing with um uh the luko that uh, the thing that luko was talking about ilulu's like you know circumstances the childhood uh, like you know thing like how she was forced to grow up but now she has kobayashi so she's kind of letting herself go that's one of the like you know one of the biggest thing that we got to know in this episode that they explained to us the next one was obviously the whole thing with the maid outfit where georgie explains what an outfit actually is it's not that the outfit makes a person it's a person that makes the outfit and by the in the end we also get to see how kobayashi is uh, how uh, toru is uh, you know passionate about something and that something is just kobayashi so whatever like you know thing she does if it's about kobayashi she'll have a great time like these are like the few things that we got to know as i said it was very slice of life but it also taught us of a lot of things so yeah so yeah guys that was it that was my uh, reaction to episode number uh, three of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So if you guys enjoyed my reaction, be sure to press the like button and subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, and comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to let me know. I'll definitely check them out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.